Well, good morning. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you into the Sanctuary of Manor from Heaven Ministries. I'm Overseer Michael Armstrong, and you are in the place where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. And you know what? Where the, where the Spirit of the Lord dwells, there is liberty. That means you're free to lift your hands. That means you're free to say glory. You can say hallelujah. You can say shout. You can do what you want to do in the presence of the Lord. Respectable. You can do what you want to do in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Listen, as you're entering into the sanctuary, if you've been here before, I know people are right now giving a shout out, letting people know where they're coming in from, what part of the world, from the north the south, the east, and the west. We thank God for you coming to fellowship with us here today. Listen, I don't take it lightly. I know you could be doing something else with your time, but you thought not of yourself to come to fellowship with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries. I truly believe you came to hear a word from the Lord, not to just to hang out with Overseer Armstrong, but you came to hear the unadulterated word of God. And if that's what you came here for today, you are in the right place. Listen, if you never knew before, we believe in relationship over religion. We're not into religion, but we're into the right relationship with our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, with our Heavenly Father, Abba Father. We are into a relationship, not religion. So again, if you're coming in from South Africa, we say thank you. We say good afternoon to you. If you're coming in from Cape Town and uh, Durban, Pretoria, if you're coming in from Nigeria, you're coming in from Ghana, you're coming in from Accra, Ghana, you're coming in from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, we see you coming in right now. We thank you for coming in from Mobasa, Kenya. We thank you, Zimbabwe. We thank you, Zambia, Lusaka, Zambia. We thank you. We thank you for coming to fellowship with us from the United States of America. If you're right over here in upstate New York, all the way over to California, we thank you from Minnesota down here to Florida. We thank you for coming to fellowship with us. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he does in this atmosphere. And we're just going to give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Because he's the one who's allowed us to be, have, to be able to have a place where we can come and assemble ourselves in his presence. Amen. You know, it's good and pleasant when all God's children, when the brethren come together. What a time. What a time. What a time. So I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer. I'm going to get out of the way. We're going to let the Holy Spirit minister this message to us today. And we're praying. Praying and believing that the people of God will be blessed and that you're, you, somebody's going to be set free. I believe it in Jesus' name. I believe it. I believe it. Somebody's going to hear this word today and they're going to get healed. may not be a healing of sickness, but maybe a healing that you need it within yourself. Amen? So we're just going to pray right now. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of fellowshipping. We thank you for this time that we're able to come to assemble ourselves in your presence, Lord, knowing that your word declares where two or more are gathered in your name, there you shall be in the midst of them. Father, we know that you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you need to repent. You said it, Lord. You gave us your word, and you've seen to it that everything that you said, Father, we can look today and see that it is still well. It is well with our soul. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God is here to stay. And we bless you. We praise you, and we thank you now for your word. Lord, we understand that it is your word that you sent that healed them. It is your word that you sent to set the captives free. And it is your word that we're standing on here today. Father, that as your word is going forward from this part of the vineyard, the, wherever your children have assembled to hear this word today, we pray that someone will, uh, the scales will call, fall from someone's eyes, that they may be enlightened to, to see you, Father, to chase after you like it's nobody's business. Father, we pray that someone will hear this word today and their shackles will come off, that they will find themselves not bound but set free in the name of Jesus. Father, we cancel every assignment of the enemy that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Satan, right now you have no room, no authority in this house, in these vessels, in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you and we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, have your way in this in this service, Lord. Have your way if we come to assemble ourselves to hear from heaven. Father, even now, Lord, I pray that as I decrease, you may increase. Use me for your purpose. Use me for your glory, Lord. Have your way in this vessel, Father, that they may know that they've heard from heaven here today. Father, not even as I've studied, but allow me to speak as the Holy Spirit will give me utterance. Use me this day, Father, for your purpose. Use me for your glory. And all these things, I give you praise. I give you honor and I glorify you as I declare and decree that there is no God greater than you, Jehovah God. So have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way is my prayer. And as it's heard in heaven, let the manifestation fall fresh upon us now, wherever we reside that your word will be manifested in the place where we are. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Amen again. Listen, 
I just want to say thank you again for coming. I, like I said, I don't want to sound redundant. I do know that you can be doing something else with your time, and I truly appreciate you coming here to fellowship with us here today. Amen? Amen. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's see what the Word of God has to speak to us about today. Amen? Amen. All right, so listen, if you already have your Bibles, if not, you want to write down the scriptures because I want you to be able to keep me as an honest preacher. I don't want you to just take my word for it and say this is what God said or this is what the preacher said God said. No, go back and read it for yourself. Ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to come to give you an understanding as you're hearing this word even today that you know that you're going to be able to hear and comprehend and understand what the Spirit of God is speaking to you today. Amen? So, again, if you have your Bible, you can turn with me. We're going to have two scriptures of reading, opening scriptures. The first one is going to be 2 Timothy 3.16, and the other, the second scripture is going to be uh, 3 John 1 and 2. As you know, if you've been here with us before, my choice of reading is the New American Standard Version. It may sound different than the version that you have, but we're going to get the results that God intended us to get. Amen? Amen. All right, so listen. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and it reads, All scripture is inspired by God, and beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness. Third John 1 and 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. The word of God is blessed. His children are blessed. So now we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he does in this atmosphere. And I pray that your uh, eyes will be open, that your ears will be touched, that you're able to hear and understand that this word is for you. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Me too, but it's for you. Listen, today I want to speak to you from the theme of preaching prosperity. Preaching prosperity. Now, I know some right now some people probably face frowned up and everything because you done heard enough of this prosperity preaching. Let me tell you something. Today's message begins with uh, uh, this amazing verse. The first verse that I read. It, it comes from God and it clearly reflects the mind of God for you. You have to remember that the Bible says that, listen, all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is inspired by God and is beneficial uh, for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness. God inspired this word. So I'm going to speak to you day, today from an inspired word of God. So I want you to have yourself, your mind, your, your spirit ready to receive an inspired word. Because we're talking today about preaching prosperity. And as I said, all scripture has been inspired by God. It's been inspired. Therefore, uh, uh, the more more than anything else, God's wish is, God's desire is that uh, uh, His will is, and His plan for your life is that you should prosper in your health as well as your soul. Prosper in your health as well as your soul. It's a spiritual and it's a physical thing. God is expecting you to prosper. Now, listen. I know every message comes with. It's, it has its own form of controversy. So I don't expect this message to be any different, if you understand what I'm saying. I know that there are some Christians who have uh, been turned off. They have problems when it comes to hearing the message about prosperity preaching. They, here they go again. When you start talking this prosperity preaching, I got to keep my hand on my wallet. When you start pro talking this prosperity preaching, when, they, when I hear that, we got to close our purse and, and keep it locked up a little tighter because we know you're trying to get your hand in my pocket. That's what people hear when they hear prosperity preaching. They always believe it's something that God is telling you to release so that you can get something. And the majority of the thing when you hear this, you're automatically being uh, conditioned to receive a word that's saying that you got to release something financially in order for you to receive something from God that's going to be spiritually or physical. You got to get that financial thing off of you. And that's what it is that the majority of people hear. So I know that some Christians, as I said, they have a problem when they hear teaching or preaching on prosperity because they've been led astray by false teachers. I'm saying it. You've been led astray by false teachers and false preachers who have taught and preached prosperity. And when the show was over, when the smoke and, and mirrors were gone, you found out that the, uh, uh, the only one who received prosperity was the one who gave the message. Let's be real. I want you to hear this word today, and I want you to get a different uh, view 
or, or, or revelation about prosperity preaching, preaching prosperity. Listen, if you can understand that, here's the truth from the word of God. If you can understand that every word God spoke in this Bible, in whatever the one that you have before you, if you have an understanding that every word that God speaks in this Bible, his word is true. If his word is true, his word is also a word of prosperity. But the prosperity only comes when you apply it. It only comes when you apply it. Listen, I know you're probably sitting here waiting to say, when are you going to tell us to start sending the money? Listen, listen to the word first, all right? And you do what the Lord tells you to do. I'm talking about the word of God being a word of prosperity. When I'm saying that, I'm saying that God's word is a seed. And if you plant the seed in the right soil, it will bring you prosperity in the form of a harvest. If, if God's word is a seed, and it is, when you take this seed, if you take the seed, the word of God, and you eat that word, you eat your seed, you will, uh, uh, it will bring prosperity to you in the form of, uh, not in the form of a harvest, but in the form of uh, nourishment, in the form of satisfying what it was that you were hungry for. If you took this word of God, because it is a seed, and if you just ate the word, you didn't plant the word, you just took this word, you ate this word, you're going to hunger again. You are. Because you did not do what the word was asking you to do. What are you saying, overseer? I'm saying this. I'm saying that prosperity, that there's prosperity in the word of God. And it's not just, the prosperity is not just for the teacher. It's not just for the preacher. But the prosperity is for the doer of the word. In James, James 1.22, he tells us what? He says, but prove yourselves doer, doers of the word and not just hearers who deceive themselves. James is telling you and I, he's saying that as an individual, if you want to prosper from the word of God, then you have to be a doer of the word of God. If you're not a doer of the word, then James is saying that you're just deceiving yourself in the thinking that you heard the word. So therefore, since I heard the word, I should be prospering from the thing that I've heard. No, you heard the word and you ate the word. So you got satisfied for the moment that you received it. Somebody's getting satisfied right now. They're getting fulfilled right now because you're hearing this word and you're eating the word, which is good because the word is going to sustain you. But now what happens when that word, that, that hunger comes back around again? You ate your seed. Dude, what are you going to do? If you're not a doer of the word, James says, if you're not a doer of the word, then you're just deceiving yourself, thinking because you heard the word, you should be prospering. You're deceiving yourself. God expects us to do what? God expects us to read or study. The word tells us to study the word to show yourself approved. God is expecting us to study his word, and he's expecting us to prosper in every area of our life after studying his word. Because his word is going to cause you to prosper. It is a seed. And if you took this seed and you planted it within your soil, your vessel, your, your being, which should be a healthy soil, you should be living righteously. You should be living holy unto God. So therefore, that makes your vessel holy. So when you take the seed of God, which is a, the word of God, which is a seed, which is holy, and you plant that word within your uh, a vessel, what you're doing now is God is expecting you because you took his word, you became a doer of the word, you've a meaning doing mean you're applying the word of God to your life. All right, let me make it plain for you. When James tells you to be a doer and not just a hearer, he's telling you to do the word, to apply the word of God to your life. God tells you what in his word? He's expecting you to, to study his word. When you're studying the word, you're applying the word to your life. And as long as you're doing what God tells you to do, you should be prospering from the word of God. This is the pros preaching prosperity. I'm preaching prosperity today, whether you realize it or not. I'm going to help you if you want to receive the help in how you should be prospering. Not just financially, but in your soul. Your spirit should be prospering through the word of God. Through the word of God. Listen. God expects you to read and study his words so that you can prosper in every area of your life. 
And John tells us the one we opened up with, 3 John 1 and 2. God proves it. He proves it. Uh, uh, his interest in us. Uh, uh, God lets us know that he's completely interested in us uh, uh, being prosperous in our life. Material prosperity, physical prosperity, talking about bodily prosperity, as well as prosperity of your soul. That's what God is telling us. That's what he told us in 3 John. He says, listen, uh, beloved, uh, 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 I pray that in all respects that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. God is expecting you to prosper. Prosper. Not just one, but it's a plural, meaning you do not stop prospering until he calls us off of this uh, earthly plane, calls you out of your body. God is expecting you to prosper in everything of every area of your life. If you take a closer look at the verse that I've just read, an opening verse from uh, John, uh, 3 John 1 and 2, let's take a closer look at it. When he says, Beloved, in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Amen? Listen, some people may be prospering in their soul. And but they're not prospering uh, physically or you're not prospering materially. You may be prospering, but you're not prospering to the uh, uh, to the extent that God is expecting you to prosper. You're not prospering in your soul. You're not prospering materially. You're not you're not even in good health. And and some people when I'm talking about some, I'm talking about some Christians who who are not doing well. They're not doing well. Some Christians uh they may be upright, they may be uh, forthright in all their affairs, they, uh, they, but yet and still they're sick. Uh, 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 they're financially broke. They're, they're, they're not well. And they're not in good health. Believe it or not, there are more than a handful of these types of Christians. And you may be one as you're listening to this message. That's between you and God. But you may be one. You may be uh, uh, living your best, blessed life. You may be uh, one of these Christians who are upright and forthright in all your affairs. But yet and still, you're sick spiritually, you're sick physically, and you're sick financially. You're not in good health. If I can make it plain, you're not. And that's going against what the Word of God has said for you to do. You're doing the right thing the best way you know how, to the best of your ability. You're upright, you're forthright in all your affairs, but yet you're sick and you're financially broke. Broke. Whether you're one of those Christians or not, I want you to know that the Word of God does not contradict itself. God's Word says, Beloved, that's you and I, God speaking. I wish from the mouth of God to your ears. God is saying, my child, I wish, beloved, I, I, I wish that you will prosper in your health, in your finances, just as your soul, your spirit is prospering. This is what God's intentions are for us. And I know, as I said, this prosperity preaching, people have been led astray hoodwinked, bamboozled, because you've allowed the tent revival to come to town and the prophet of prophets are in your pocket selling you a blessed water, selling you blessed oil. My brothers and sisters, you have the authority given to you by God, Jesus himself, that you can bless your own water. Amen. You can bless your own oil. Amen. You don't need to be spending money to receive a healing, to receive a financial blessing, to receive a blessed holy water or, or holy oil, you can you are God's anointed, God's elect. And God said that he will not uh, uh, withhold any good thing from you. Why? Because you do what the word said. You walk upright before him. You're doing God listen. 
and I know, like I said, I know a lot of other people, they, 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 they hear what I'm getting ready to tell you right now, and they say, overseer, you can't tell the people that. Listen, God knows where you are. God knows that as best as you're trying to do, you are slipping and sliding. You are not walking perfectly as long as you're carrying this vessel, called, this uh, suit of called flesh. You're going to make mistakes along the way. God is, God is not so mean, so cruel, so unjust that he's going to withhold blessings from you that he knows that the more I bless you, the, the more it's going to help you to get right. That's why he blesses you. Listen, if God never did anything for you, why would you serve him? I hope you serve him. Why would you love him? I hope you love him. Why would you even read his word? Why would you sing a praise song? Why would you do anything for God if God never did anything for you? And if you said God never did anything for me, obviously God never did anything, you're, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. Because he gave you Jesus. God gave you Jesus. All right? So we can stop that right there. We can stop that right there. But I want to let you hear something about preaching prosperity. Listen. The word of God says, I wish you will prosper in health. Your health and, and in your finances, just as your soul is prospering. And as Christians, we, we, we must believe that in the material, uh, uh, as well as the physical, as well as the spiritual prosperity in our lives. We have to receive the balance of the word of God. God don't want your spirit so uh, heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. God doesn't want to bless you so that you can see your finances grow and you can't do nothing for anybody else. But God wants us to see the balance of the word. We have to have a spiritual balance so that we can grow and prosper in the word of God. This is prosperity preaching, preaching prosperity. Listen, listen. God wants us to be, uh, uh, uh. God wants us to, you and I, he wants us to live a balanced life, spiritual and physical. He wants us, listen. How do we do that over here? We can't just, uh, uh, because now some of you do. Some of you are so up in the clouds all day, every day, your feet don't touch the ground. That's not spiritual balance. Even when Peter was out in the Mount of Transfiguration, he wanted to pitch a tent. He wanted to stay up in the clouds. But no, you got to come back down into the valley. You can't stay up here. And this is where God tells you, listen, you can have your moments where you're high praise, but you got to come back down and level it back out. You got to stay balanced with this word of God. Prosperity preaching is going to help you to stay balanced because God wants you to prosper in the finite and your, your material, your physical, your spiritual. God wants to see you prosper. And this is what his word is telling us. That last part of that verse, this is what he tells us. He says the last part of the verse ref refers to prosperity of your soul. He says, that, uh, which is the spiritual part that has the highest pri priority. No matter what it is that we gain here on this earthly realm, no matter how we prosper financially, materially, no matter what it is, it means nothing when God calls you up out of this body. You, wherever it is that you're going to go, heaven or hell, because I don't know. That's not my choice. It's not my, my call to say where you're going. That's between you and God. But wherever it is you're going to go, you're not taking your material things with you. You're not going to need them there. If you're going to heaven, Jesus already tell you that, that it, God has already prepared a place for you. In my Father's house, there's many mansions, many rooms. If it wasn't, I saw I would tell you. And guess what? Jesus prepared a place for you. And if you're going to hell, guess what? Satan prepared a place for you too. I know you didn't want to hear it, but that's what it is. He prepared a place for you. But what I want to talk to you about is this preaching prosperity. We'll deal with that heaven and hell as we close out. But listen, God wants you to prosper materially and financially, but God also wants you to be in good health. Good health. What do you mean, overseer? I've never heard God talk about materially pri uh, 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 prospering. God doesn't want you to materially prosper. The devil is a liar. Let me tell you something. God wants you to prosper uh, materially, financially, and spiritually. God expects you to prosper. I've never read that in the, in the scripture over here. Now, you, now you're, you're putting stuff in the word of God. Okay, let me help you out. Listen. Do you not know that you're blessed to be a blessing? God blesses you so that you can be a blessing to someone else. What are you saying? When you prosper materially or financially, you are expected to be a blessing in your home. You're expected to be a blessing in your community. You're expected to be a blessing to the nations. 
This is why God blesses you. He doesn't bless you so that you can walk around and see how great you are. God is the one who raised you up, elevated you to your financial status. Oh, you may want to put the claim on your education, but no. God is the one who did it for you. And when God blesses you, my brother, my sister, he doesn't bless you so that you can be a hoarder. But God blesses you so that you can be a blessing. So so, so when you prosper uh, uh, financially, when you prosper materially, you are expected to be a blessing to your home, to your community, and to the nations. You take your prosperity, you take your uh, uh, financial prosperity, and, and you're so blessed as you are. You take your financial uh, prosperity and you buy something materially. You take your financially and buy and purchase a materially purchase uh, an apartment complex if you that blessed you purchase a cop a car, uh, excuse me I'm getting tongue tied God bless me listen you take your financial blessing and you purchase you a uh, uh, take your material now and you purchase you an apartment complex and you open that up for low income housing and guess what not only are you taking that to be a blessing for low income housing but then there's some who can't even afford the low income so you let them stay until God restores them so that they're able to get on their goings and they'll be a blessing unto someone else they'll never forget what you've done for them wasn't it with Jesus when he blessed the lepers he said wasn't that ten of you what happened to the other nine only one came back because he was able to receive something when you are uh, Find yourself, uh, when you see how God is blessing you, how you're prospering financially, how you're prospering, you take your finances and you apply it to something material and then you take your material and you buy something and you become a blessing to your family, to your home, to your community, to your nation. You buy an apartment building if that's what you're able to do. God bless you. Why? Because you're blessed to be a blessing. You take your finances and you materially pay for someone's college education. You got it like that. Oh, you don't think that's what God calling you to do? You think God just blessed you so that you can say how, how much you have, right? That's not it. That's not it. Listen, you take your uh, finances and you materially now be a blessing and pay for someone's college tuition. You bless someone. You bless someone. You take your, uh, 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 your, 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 your finances and your material blessings and you be a blessing to somebody. If God blessed you so much that you can afford to buy an apartment complex, God bless you. You don't have to have the highest rent in the neighborhood. You take your blessing and you be a blessing. You offer uh, affordable housing, low-income housing. And if the family can't stay there, then if, guess what? Let them stay. Give them six months. What is it going to affect to you? God is going to bless you even more. Why? Because Jesus tells us, if you did it to the least of them, you did it even unto me. You did it unto the Lord. Listen, you take your finances and you materially pay for someone's college tuition. You don't think they'll be grateful enough to do the same thing for someone else? Oh, yeah, they will. Oh, yeah, they will. Listen, you can't forget that as you're prospering, God wants you to be in good health too. He, what, what good is it for God to bless you so much uh, financially, materially, but now your spirit's jacked up. You can't, you can't even walk down the street without needing a cane and a crutch. And you're a young, able-bodied person. Still in your right state of mind. Still should be having your health and your strength. This is why he tells you to be in good health. Because God is expecting you to prosper. He's expecting you to prosper. Be in good health. God wants you to be in good health. Healing is good when you're in health, when you're in good health. If you don't need healing, then don't get sick. Amen? Don't get sick. Hallelujah. Listen. God wants you to be in good health. He wants you to, and I, like I said, I, I hang out with some Pharisee friends. Because what they do is they keep me balanced. Because I see what not to do. I have some Pharisee friends that say you shouldn't even go into a gymnasium because that is of the devil. They don't, they don't adhere to the word of God. Be in good health. If you don't want to go to a gym, go for a walk. Walk around the neighborhood. If you're in a high crime area, go during the daytime. Go with somebody. Amen. Go and exercise yourself. 
Be in good health. When you're in good health, you don't need healing because you don't get sick. And I don't know of one person other than Jesus who walked the earth and didn't experience sickness. That's Jesus. You and I, we can get a common cold. We got this thing going around today called the COVID virus. Glory to God. Listen, God is above all of that. Be in good health. Be in good health. What's the secret to this in and out prosperity? How do you keep your life in the prosperous? How do you, uh, uh, how can you prosper in your soul and in your body? How do you do these things? Well, I'm glad you asked. Listen, uh, Colossians 3.16, abbreviated version, my version, abbreviated. It tells us what? Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Let the word of Christ. If you're talking about prospering, then how do you do it? You got to let this word of Christ, let this word dwell richly in you. If the word of God is richly in you, you're going to see yourself prospering. You'll prosper spiritually, and therefore, if you're going to prosper spiritually, you're going to prosper physically. And if you're prospering physically, you're going to prosper materially. You're going to prosper materially too. Why? Because the lesser is included in the greater. You cannot prosper spiritually in your soul and don't expect the physical to prosper. And this is where people don't see the balance of the word of God. You can stay all day in the gym working out, working out, working out, working out. But what are you doing now with your soul? What are you doing if your spirit is not prospering? You're going to be uh, unbalanced. And God is telling you to stay balanced. Stay balanced. And let everything come up at the same time. Your soul, your health, let your finances, your material, let it all come up at the same rate of time. Spiritually balanced. If you give yourself wholly to the word of God, studying and meditating on the word, you're going to prosper as God expects you to prosper. God expects you to keep his word inside of you until it pours out of your mouth. God expects you to keep his word inside of you until it flows out of your life in every situation that you're in. You'll see yourself prospering. This is preaching prosperity. This isn't something that you got at the tent revival. I know. And I haven't yet began to tell you to put your hand in your pocket and bless me with anything that you have. No. And I'm not going to. I'm not. So if you're waiting on that part, you might as well just, be, just stop waiting because I'm not going to. Allow me to finish. Listen. God expects you to keep his word, which is prosperity. Keep his word inside of your mouth. Until it flows from you. Until it flows from your life. Until you start to seeing everything that you're in. Everything around you is going to prosper. Because you apply the word of God. You took his word which was a seed. You planted it within your soil. Within your spirit. And you began now to allow this word to take root. And every place in your life, you're going to see yourself prospering. In your job, in the marketplace, wherever it is you go, you'll be prospering because you're applying the word of God to your life. Listen, in Joshua 1.8, God tells Joshua this. He says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Here we go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will achieve success. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It doesn't sound like God is trying to keep you back. It doesn't sound like God doesn't want you to uh, be prosperous. It doesn't sound like that God doesn't want you to achieve. But what does it sound like? It sounds like that God wants you to keep his word in your mouth. It sounds like that God wants you to do what? To meditate on his word. God says this. He tells Joshua and he tells us today. He says that when we meditate on his word day and night, it will make your way prosperous. God says you will make your way way prosperous. That's what the word says. Not God making your way prosperous, but you will make your way prosperous and you will make your way 
you will achieve a great success. Yin, then you, not God. When you meditate on this, see how plain and simple this is? This is how God, this is how you know you can trust God. He's not asking you to do anything but stay in his word. Meditate in his word. Study his word. Stay in his word. And he says that when you do that day and night, he says, be careful to do all that is written. Now, see, he didn't say to, he said, be careful to do all that is uh, 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 according to all that is written in it. Be careful to do it. Because he knows that you're going to make mistakes along the way. But be careful to do it. Do your best. If you're somebody's walking across the street, you say, be careful as you walk across the street. Mean, look both ways. Go across the street, but do your best as you're going. God is saying, do your best. Be careful to do according to all that is written in this word. All that is written in it. Why? Because then you will make your way prosperous. You're going to make your way prosperous by doing the thing that I told you to do. It's to stay in my word. Not only will you make your way prosperous, but you, then you will achieve success. God is not trying to keep you from being successful. He wants to see you prosper. He wants to see you successful. He wants you to do it, but he want, He given you everything that you need to do it. He says to stay in my word. Meditate on it. Study it. Day and night. Day and night. Listen. Your actions, your work, your faith. In the word, it's going to cause you to be prosperous. God has already did his part. He gave us the word. He can't make you study it. He can't make you uh, 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 meditate on it. He gives it to you. The rest is up to you now. If you say, well, I'm not prospering through this word of God. Are you applying the method of meditating? Are you applying the method of studying the word day and night. Listen, you may say, well, I have sickness in my body. Jesus had bore all the stripes so we don't have to be in sickness. Listen, I know, I know, I know. You may have a, a sickness and, and, and you've been saying, overseas, I've been trying to get rid of this thing for years and but yet and still it's still on me. But guess what? God's grace is sufficient. And no matter what it is that you, because I'm, I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I don't know what it is that you're going through. You may have a sickness. You may. But that's not what God's desire is. He wants you to be in good health. And that's why he tells you that. Even that he tells the Apostle Paul, listen, my grace is sufficient for you. And no matter what it is that you go through, the Apostle Paul wrote at least two-thirds of this New Testament that we have here today. He wrote it with a thorn in his side. So that doesn't mean now because you're going through something that God can't use you. That means that because you're going through something now doesn't mean that God doesn't expect you to prosper. He wants you to apply his word to your life so that you may prosper. You may. Your part, God did his part. He gave it. Your part is to, my part is to the meditation of the word. And that's going to make our way, your way, my way, when we do what God says to do, it's going to make your way prosperous. It doesn't contradict the word of God. It doesn't stop. You may say, well, I don't want to do that. It doesn't stop anybody else around you who's prospering because they're doing it. They're applying their principles, the meditation day and night. They're doing it and they're prospering financially, materially, and spiritually. They're doing it. What are you waiting for? You're the one sitting here talking about you can't prosper through the word of God, but you're not doing what God told you to do. Listen, God tells you that he expects you to achieve success. He expects you to do it. It doesn't sound like he's holding you back. You're holding yourself back. And don't put this one on the devil because he's sitting there with his arm folded and saying the same thing. I ain't did nothing over there, but I get all the blame for it anyway. No, you're the one holding yourself back. You are. Because you're not taking advantage of the thing that God has given you so that you can prosper in every area of your life. So that you can be a blessing not just to your home, but to the community. Not just to the community, but to the nations of the world. You're expected to be a blessing. Being a lender to many nations and a borrower of none. That's what God is expecting for you and I to be doing. That's his word. Listen. Did you ever stop to think that your prosperity and how... Uh, you will succeed in life. It depends on you. You probably never thought of that. That's why I'm telling you, you're the one holding yourself up. Don't sit there and say it's the devil. The devil, is, the devil did what he wanted to do, but guess what? You're still here. 
you are still here through the grace of God. And the reason why you're still here is because the purpose for your life, that God's purpose for your life, it has not been complete. So, prosperity, if you say I haven't achieved that, and God is telling you that he is expecting you to get that, then guess what? You can't leave this earth realm until you get that which God has promised you, the prosperity. If you're not going to do your part for it, then fine. God is not going to sit around waiting for you to get another revelation and say, oh, I should have done such and such. If you're not going to do it, he already knows. And then maybe you're gone. Maybe. I don't know. That's not my part to say. But nevertheless, listen. There's a clear word from Joshua 1.8 that lets us know that God is expecting us to have prosperity in every area of our lives. Listen. If it says to meditate on the word day and night and you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have success, then that's what God is expecting you and I to do. Meditate on his word so that we can prosper from his word day and night. You may have, may have found yourself in certain situations and circumstances and, and you've had nothing to do with it. You, you, let me help you out. You may have been born into a household that was poor. You may have been born into a household that was poor, but that wasn't your fault. It wasn't yours. Why? Because you didn't ask to get born there. So since it's not your fault, that's not your story. You don't have to stay there. In that physical or material a mental state of mind. You don't have to stay there. Why? Because you have the power to do something about it. You're being, your mind should be, should be being renewed by staying in the word of God, meditating on this word day and night so that you can see yourself prospering. You have to change your situation. God has given you everything that you need to change your situation. So don't sit here now and say there's, there's nothing I can do about it. There's something you can do about it. You may have been born poor, but you don't have to stay poor. Listen. Ooh. You may have been. Glory to God. You may have been born poor, but you weren't meant to stay poor. Jesus became poor for our sakes that we may be rich. And I'm not talking about material riches as to going to the store. Yes, that's included. But what about your physical richness? What about your spiritual richness? What about what about the, the richness of the word of God that is applied to your life? This word right here is worth more than any money in the world because you can get all the money in the world from this word. From this word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen. The word of God gives us the principles of prosperity. But it's up to you how and when you want to start applying these principles to your life. That's up to you. God has did or done everything that he said he was going to do. And now he's watching to see when you're going to change your situation. He's watching to see when you're going to change your circumstances. He's closed his ears to hear, I'm not prospering. God believe. Close his ears to hear, God, you're not doing nothing for me. God said, I've done. I'm waiting on you. The devil's sitting over there, as I said, arms folded and crossed up. Well, keep blaming me. And meanwhile, you're going nowhere. He, he's laughing at you too because you are not applying the word of God to your life. And you're so busy saying that this one's holding me, that one's holding me. Right now, knowing this, you're holding yourself. You are holding yourself. As much as God wants you to be prosperous, as much as he wants you to be in health and be happy and be strong, you have a vital role in making God's dream for your life to become a reality. You hold that. You do. God said in John 3, 1 and 2, he said, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. This is what God says. God didn't just say that to hear himself speak, but he said it so that you and I would catch hold of what he's saying and apply it to our lives so that we can be a, benef a beneficiary of the prosperity that God has put in this earth realm. We can be a beneficiary of the prosperity that God has put in this spiritual realm. You can take the physical and the spiritual and be well balanced and prosper in the thing that God has placed in this realm, this earth realm, for us to do. It's available for you. It is available for you. Listen, 
When I tell you that God didn't say these words just to hear himself speak, follow me over to 2 Peter, uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 from the King James Version. I love this one because he tells us from the King James Version, he says, listen, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. There it is again. God is uh, uh, sealing it. Jesus, has, God gave it. Jesus has uh, 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 co-signed it. And the Holy Spirit reminds us that this is the sealing of God. What? He's done everything. God has, according to his divine power, has given us all things that pertain unto, his life, to, uh, pertain unto life and godliness. God has given us all that we need so that we can be successful here on earth, so that we can prosper here on earth, so that our soul and our finances, our physical, our health can prosper. He's given it to us, all that we need here on earth, so that we can live an extraordinary life of prosperity, so that you can be a blessing to your home, to your community, and to the nations. This is what God is expecting you to do. Ephesians uh, 1 3 tells us this Blessed be the God of our Father and Lord, uh, blessed be the God of our Father, uh, blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly, in the heavenly places in Christ. Again, God done his part, he's blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places you have spiritual blessings you have physical blessings god has given you everything and it's in his word it's in his word that you should prosper and be in good health god done it it's up to you and i to start to do our part so that we can achieve the things that the word of god has said listen if there's a situation in your life that hasn't changed yet even right now, if you may, you know more about it than I do. And God knows more about it than you do. And he's sitting there waiting. Listen, if there's a situation in your life that hasn't changed yet, and you want it to change, the word of God has an answer for that situation. All you have to do is trust the word of God. Trust what God says that he's going to do in his word. How do you trust it? By applying it. How do I apply it? By meditating on it day and night. Now listen, if you do what God tells you to do, and you say, I've been meditating on this word day and night, and I, I haven't seen myself prospering financially, because that's what you really want. You can care less whether or not your soul is going to prosper. You really want that financial prosperity, and that's between you and God. But if you say that you've applied it, then you take it back to God, because God is telling us to do what? To trust his word. And we know that God is not a man that he should not lie. So if you say that you've done everything that God has told you to do in his word and you're not prospering, you're, then you take it back up to God. And God will explain to you something that you've done that is keeping you, and, 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 and it may be some unconfessed sin that's keeping you from prospering the way God expects you to prosper. Listen, listen. He tells you to carefully, walk carefully through this word, study it carefully, go through your life carefully, because I know you're going to make some mistakes. If you knowingly, willfully sinned, then just ask God to forgive you. And, 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 and God is not going to hold it against you. And you can move on and start to doing the things that God expects you to do. Meditation isn't something for God. God doesn't have to meditate on his word. He gives us the word so that we can meditate on it. God doesn't have to study his word to show himself approved to who? Man? Please. God doesn't have to meditate on his word. He doesn't have to study his word. He's already given us his word. So now what he expects you to do is to apply the word. Meditation isn't for God, but it's for you and I. Any one of us, we can do what God says we can do through his word when we apply the word of God to our life. In 1 Timothy 4.15 from the King James Version, he tells us this. He says, meditate, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen. When you meditate on the word of God, on these things, he tells us, he says, when you give yourself wholly 
to the, to the word of God and you give yourself wholly to the Lord, that your profiting will appear to all. Nobody's going to want to question how you got so blessed. It's going to appear to all, everybody. It's uh, uh, the inevitable result of your, your prosperity and your progress will appear to all. That means it's going to be apparent. That means it's going to be undeniable. That means it's going to be unending. That means it's going to spread abroad to the nations that they will call you blessed. They're going to call you blessed. You got to never forget that God tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, when he tells us what? He says that I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for prosperity. This is preaching prosperity. So the next time you go down to the tent revival or wherever it is you go and they start telling you about the prosperity of the word of God or you get turned off by prosperity preaching or somebody tells you, they say, I don't want to hear none of this prosperity preaching because the only one that gets rich from the prosperity is the preacher or the teacher of the prosperity word. Then you refer them over to Manna from Heaven Ministries. You refer them to this uh, prosperity, preaching prosperity message from Overseer Armstrong. You send this word to them so that they may see that God intends for for them to prosper through the preaching of the prosperity word of God because his word is prosperity. His word is a seed. And because they received it from somewhere else that gave someone else a result, you didn't get what God intended you to get. Listen, God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans for prosperity. He, God has a plan to see you prospering. And, and, and guess what? If that's his plan, he expects you to prosper. God is expecting you to prosper in every area of your life so that you can be a blessing to your home, to the community, and to the nations where he's going to send you. To be a blessing. God expects us to prosper. Proverbs 10.22 tells us what? It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow. God is going to make you rich. If it's financially, if it's uh, pros uh, 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 spiritually, you are going to be rich and you're not going to be any sorrows to it. Psalm 1-3 tells us what? He will be your blessings. This is how, you go, how blessed you're going to be. He will be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its, uh, in its season, and its leaves do not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. Whatever it is, because you're so blessed, from meditating and following this word of God. Whatever it is you do, you're going to be so blessed that you're going to prosper. You're going to be like that tree that's planted by the streams of water. You're going to have roots that are going to take place where the water is. That means you'll never dry up. Your roots won't dry up because the water will never dry up. It's a stream. It's running water. It's moving. And this is what God wants you to see. Your prosperity is a moving prosperity. Prosperity that prospers. Every time you read the word of God, he says prospers. It's a verb, meaning that he doesn't expect you to stay at one level in your prosperity, but you're growing so that you can still be a blessing. Hallelujah. Listen, 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 listen. I'm give you one more. If this doesn't make you shout, I'm going to help you because this is what you're supposed to do. Listen, Psalm 35 and 27 says, may those shout for joy and rejoice who take delight in my vindication. May they continually say the Lord be exalted who delights in the prosperity of his servant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you a servant of the most high God? If you are his servant, guess what? He delights in the prosperity. God delights in the prosperity of his servant, of his children. You and I, God delights in our prosperity. Hallelujah. So listen, as I close, I want someone to know that there's a, there is prosperity in preaching and teaching the word of God. There's prosperity. The word of God is greater there's a greater uh, a prosperity in the word of God when you begin to apply the word, when you become a doer of the word of God, when you begin to meditate on this word in Jesus' name, when you meditate on the word day and night, when you become a doer of the word of God, you will see yourself prospering in the word of God because it is his delight to see his servants, to see his children, God's delight to see us prospering in his word. Amen? Amen. Listen. If you don't know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins, now's your time. I want to help you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. You already heard that. So now, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, trust him. 
Listen, you could just repeat after me and say, I know I'm a sinner. And I know that I can't save myself. I don't want to die and go to hell in, in my sins. So Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Receive me as I am. That I know that if you call me out of my body as of receiving you, I will spend eternity in your presence. And that will be the best prosperity of my eternal life in Jesus' name. And if that's you and you just did that right now, we thank God for you coming into the kingdom of God. And guess what? We want to help you to stay connected with the rest of the saints. So you can reach out to me through Facebook, Messenger. You can reach out to me through our email address. You can even go through our YouTube page and send some messages and comments. Keep in touch with us so we can keep in touch with you and keep you connected to the body of Christ. Amen? Listen, I want to pray for you before you leave out of here today. I don't know what it is you're going through, but I want you to know that it is God's desire to see you blessed. It is God's desire to see you prosper in every area of your life, not just financially, but in your spirit, your soul can prosper. This is God's desire that you will have a balanced, uh, a healthy, spiritual, and physical life. Amen? Keeping it balanced. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for your divine presence which is in our midst. Lord, we pray that as those have come today to assemble to hear this word of God, Father, I pray that they shall prosper. I pray that they shall apply this word of God to their life, that they shall begin to meditate on it day and night, that they may see themselves prospering in their spirit, Father, in their finances, Lord, and in their health. Father, that they may live a balanced a, a life of prosperity all the natural days of their life while they're on this land the earth. Father, that they may be a blessing not just to their home, not just to the community, but to the nations where you're calling them to go. Father, that they will see themselves as being a, a lenderers to many nations and a borrower of none in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as they receive this prosperity preaching, Father, that they will see themselves as the head and not the tail, that they may see themselves above only and not beneath, that they may see themselves able to do all things through Christ who strengthened them, that they may see themselves and know, Father, that they are blessed and not cursed that they are fearfully and wonderfully made and father that you have already gone before them and that you have already cleared the crooked places and made the rough edges smooth father continue to pour out your spirit upon them not in an afterlife but while they're in the land of the living that the others will indeed see them and know that they have been blessed and they are highly favored in the name of Jesus we give you praise we give you honor and we glorify you now in Christ Jesus name amen Amen, amen, and amen again. Hallelujah, glory to God. You are blessed, and you can prosper through this word of God. Listen, I'm not a salesman. I'm just a, 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 a doer, a sower of the seed of God. And I'm praying that I sow this seed into somebody's life. And if you're blessed through this message, then don't forget to send this message out. Share this message with somebody else. Let them know that there is a preaching, or, or there is a prosperity in the word of God. And I'm going to preach prosperity to you. You can send this message around and they will see how blessed they are. Amen. Listen, as you go through the rest of this day, as you go through the rest of this week, through the rest of this month, don't forget to make time for God because God has truly made time for you. Amen. Amen. If you are being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation or a contribution, please go to the link below. Thank you and may God richly bless you.